That's all right by me. That's all right. <laughs> That's all right. As they were gathered into the places of strength, the testimonies, the eruth, in all of their ignorance, above all things, they were appreciative to be alive. And they would say to have my limbs operative. I'm alive. So if it had not been for the mercies of your on our side, where would we be and our conditions would be much worse than we think that we are going through difficult challenges. There is nothing in life to me that's difficult. Not even death. Because I know that that is a seal appointment known only by Almighty Yahweh. And so even in that there is a comfort for me as uh, one that has been elected to represent the authority and the power of his kingdom. For he comfort us in Mishli, precious in the sight of Yah is the death of his Yerusha, the elect. So I don't fear death. The only thing that stings me about death is to make sure that my bosom has been cleansed from the vile corruption that we store in our fetzen, our bellies of emotion, our passion and our desires. You see, I have no fear of it. And I don't worry about it. Because I know I'm going to die and so are you. If there's one thing we must do, we must get real. This is one of the most facetious generations of folly. One that is superficial. One that operates in the spirit of khanif, of hypocrisy and lies. Because of the ovon, the iniquity, their hearts are perverse with wickedness. We don't give a damn about the most high. We care about those things that pertain to us. And none of that pertain to you produce life. It doesn't make you love Yah. It doesn't make you strive for Yah. It doesn't cause you to lay down the vile corruption of your heart uh, yeah. and pursue what your sure command us to pursue. Yeah. And that's the truth. Yeah. Our days are spent in vanity, emptiness. That's why he gave man work so that your life would not be empty. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We must work while it is day. While it is buka, because the lahil, the night season comes when no man can work. What does the word work implies? That we can operate in the strength. The word work is enunciated mitzvah. That we can operate in the power of the mitzvah of Yam. You are raised up the true messengers, your strong young men. That they will be strong and vibrant. Because those of my generation and the generation before, we have fledgling, weak men. It's everywhere you go. There's no standard for Yah. We have a precious friend, and he is. He lives in California. And I greet you all that gathered in Los Angeles with Ak Davis. As they listen, he says to me, I have every message. So when we cannot join you, I don't want them to hear. I want them to see as well. We have every message. 
So he said, I said to this woman, listen to this man. She said, I have, but I don't like him. I don't like what he says. I don't like the way he operates because uh, he has this distaste for women. That's kind of silly. He doesn't speak of them in a way that promotes their sensuality and their sexuality. See, the world has taught you well. And you're still ugly as hell. And that's why your daughters among the diaspora, you can't find a damn husband. So the world has taught you well uh, and to operate in the spirit of, of a Jezonite, of an Isidel, that you want to present your flesh. That is not what the bath of Tizayon do. They don't operate like that. And so the world has construed an image that you buy, hook, link, and you even swallow the sinker. No, I love to see the beauty of Yah's bath. And I know the things that hinder them and their beauty. So the world has given you superficial beauty. You get old, you get wrinkled, your body loses its shape. I don't care what you say. And so you want to present yourself as fine and you're not fine, honey. You're wrinkled. Talk to me. Same thing with the men. Different at all. You got wrinkles and rolls and everything else. You have no energy, no life. They would say in our generation, keep it real. I'll just keep it real. And that's what we need, Yisrael. We pronounce ourselves as though we have this great vigor and we don't have a damn thing for Yah. There's no love for him. There is no love for Yah. We can talk all we want to. You know, the little child was in my office this morning. Siri, yeah, she always comes. And the first thing she does when she sees me, she greets me with this great warmth of love. And she has such security as that when she grabs me and greets me, she supports herself on me. She allow her legs, she just, she wants me to hug her. And she will say, how you doing, papi? Ya brak. And so this morning she asked, can I have a peppermint, papi? She asked out of the earshots of my earshot. So she said, Papi, can I have a peppermint? I said, sure. When they went down on the trip, they purchased me a bag of peppermint. So I still have them. I will eventually pass it out to my little ones. And you Barak, you Ak Frank and Diana, you all can send peppermint for the children. I hope you got the package that we sent to you all. Sure you can, my Ak. And so when I gave her the peppermint, she got that, I gave her two pieces instead of one, and she was exuberant. There was a, an exuberant ruach upon her. Well, to that, papi. And she responded to me, she says to me, give me your cheek. Give me your cheek. Give me your cheek. And so I did not resist that. So I gave her my cheek. And so she goes, You see, Yah commands us to greet one another that way. It is right. It is botach. It is truth. It is yasha. It is straight up. And so she commanded my cheek to show her appreciation of something that is that minuscule and that small. We don't give a damn about Yah. I had a woman to call me this week in great agony. I'm going to teach you in a moment. Her life in great perils. And she was speaking of her husband. That he loves the name. He knows the name. And of course I am 
straightforward. I said to her, hold up, ma'am. It doesn't mean a damn thing because he knows the name. She gets quiet. She said, we were led by the Holy Ghost to move from this state to another one to be around his family. I said, true. You were led by that spirit of deception, which is a damnable, twisted, twisted lie. I said, you were not led by the Ruach of Yah. I said, that's your problem. And it has culminated into an event. That my husband, he has become so the devil has caused him. I stopped her. I said, it wasn't the devil. It was his own damn wickedness, woman. He's a corrupt man. He has engaged with this woman and he cannot turn her loose. But I love him so much. I said, I want you to understand he doesn't give a damn about you. When you say that a man knows Yah, and he operates in the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh, it's a different thing between a man that doesn't know Yah. He's a wicked man. He has no knowledge of Yah. And he goes against the very authority of the Abba. I said, he doesn't give a damn for you because he hates you. He that commits adultery, with a woman. He sonny, he hates, he ta'am, he abhorred, he detests, it has putrefied his own nefesh, his own life. When a man declares that he walks in Yas Torah, and he goes beyond the boundaries of the, of the auspice of Yah, he's a wicked man. He has constituted in his own mind that it's all right. I don't give a damn if it's a woman or a man. So that's why the daughters of Tizayon, you should not dress in a way to allure the attention of other men. You have a husband, you make sure you prepare yourself for him. And keep yourself beautiful for the man. That's what you do. And man, you make sure your virile is not too exposed to others as though you're mighty and powerful. But it's for your issue. And man, if you have no wife, you seek Yah. Not for a wife. Because Yah will not hold any tough thing from them that walk upright. That walk Yosha according uh, to the commands uh, and the order of the Torah. But we have a wicked generation. We have a generation that everyone is doing right in their own eyes, their own ayen. What they determine spiritually and mentally, how they perceive it, how they calculate it in their own mind. And so we have a vow repugnant stench at an offering before the Most High that he detests. It is a stinking thing unto Yah. It is the spirit of Nahash. It is a bewitching. It is a spirit that is viola. It is the spirit of the dead when Sin is completed. When sin is finished, when sin has its course, it brings forth uh, death. That's what it does. And so that's why they're singing a damn dead spirit. And everything they do is from uh, kasam, from the power of divination, because they think that they are divine, and they are because they draw from the strength of hell. That's what Nahash does. It makes you speak your damn mind. And the Ruach HaKodesh leads us in the mind of life, uh, which is the mind of Almighty Yahweh, uh, through the power and that mind always testify of the strength of Yahshua. We can do all things. The Yahshua HaMashiach that gives us strength. Herzog Cain reminded us on Chatfei Imans. You that say you're weak, you're weak because you do not follow the simple protocol. Of Almighty Yah, that He commands you as you that are weak, let allow. Let the weak say that I am uh, Koach. I have the strength of Yah's might, of His wisdom, of His knowledge, 
I have the strength of the testimony of Yeshua. And when the power of this darkness, of this whole shek, of my dark thoughts, uh, try to destroy the very light of Yeshua, I rise up with the hair of the sword. What sword? The word of Yah. That's what I rise up with. We sin and we don't give a damn. We are the strong men. You are said that there will be few, F-E-W, and he used one of the most pronounced Hebraic, Aramaic, Ugaritic, Ethiopic word that says M-A-T-H. We would say math. He said, and there shall be few. What does that imply? That there will be only a few men of strength that shall be left among Yisra'ya. You will not be able to find them. And that's the truth. Because everyone wants their damn flesh to be carol. Damn your flesh. It makes no difference whether you love me or not. You don't love ya. So why do I care? I don't want your filthy love anyway. It is the spirit of Nahash that has brought about the strange doctrines or the strange teachings to our mind. I want to deal with something expeditiously today. I want to move along. I want you all. You need to listen to these teachings over and over and study your damn own corrupt mind. Where are the strong men? When Yah uses the word strong, he's talking about ooze. They carry the oozes, don't they? But that's no strength. He is talking about the ooze of a man. He is strong and tenacious in the power and the wisdom of Yah. His walk represents strength, beauty, and power. His stature, the word ish, means first of all, uh, the word ish means if a man is an ish. If he's identified as an Isha, it denotes one thing above all, the power of masculinity. We get quiet. But that's what Yah said, not me. You got a problem, take it up with him. That's what it means, my Ima Daphna, my mother Eunice. It means masculinity of strength. That's what Ish. And he is a powerful being that from him comes the Ishur. She is the fidelity and the feminine of his strength. For her is strengthened by him and she operates in the power of that strength. So he said there will be few men left. Math. There will be few men that have strength and the wisdom of Yah. And so once that is done, then the gates are open. If we do not watch the gates to the entrance of the community, the stray dogs and the filthy mangy dogs come in, don't they? And so when they come in, uh, we uh, kill them. We destroy them. You have no business in here. And that's why even your shoes says, don't give that which is chadash, set apart. Unto the dogs. And don't even cast your pearls before the swines. I won't do it. And of course we all have that swine nature. I want to begin here. And I want to move quick. We find all of these strange doctrines that are proliferating. Especially among Yisra'ya because the men are ignorant. And they don't even know what is of Yah. And they're so easily seduced. And brought forth under the auspice of hell. This is an enlightenment from Shaul Barnabas. He writes unto the Hebraic people in the book of Ibram, Hebrews, chapter 13, and one verse. Because I want to show you the connotations of a prophecy of time, the end time. And everything I preach is the prophecy of end time. He says here in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, Your commands, Yisraeli, do not be carried about. Do not be removed. Do not rescind yourself. That's what Nahash did uh, to Hava. 
It removed her from the consciousness of Yah. Do not be carried about with strange or with diverse or different and strange doctrines or, or teachings. Don't be carried away with that. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 9. For it is a tough thing, it is an excellent thing uh, that the heart be established uh, with the unmerited favor, the splendor uh, and the excellence of Yah. When a man's heart is not established he is removed from the power of Yah's Torah. He is an easy target. And it is one thing that the weak will do. They will seek out those that are compatible with them. Can I give us a natural scenario? If one goes into a gym and they see men that are 300 pounds and bench pressing 400 pounds, they typically look, simply look to the gym and they identify with those with their body type. I can't do what they're doing. When a strong man comes in the gym, he looks to those that are strong because he knows that they can bear up the weight when he laid down 400 pounds on his chest. So a weak man is intimidated by the strength of the man that has mastered the technique. There are men that have mastered the Torah of Yah in the sense that it is a constant reproof upon their mind. He said, above, for above all things, the most important thing, we establish our heart. How do we establish our love that we love Yah? With all of our mind, all of our nephesh, and with all of our strength. We love him beginning there. He said, and not with meat, not with those things that satisfy the flesh. And we are people that love to eat. We don't love to eat properly, do we? We love snacking and chips and filthy food. But we don't want the meat. What is the meat? It is the body of Yeshua. It is the power of that testimony. He said, for my flesh is meat indeed. And my blood is drink indeed. And if you ignore my flesh, you have no part of me. Did they stay with him? All 5,000 turned. And they walk no more. He is direct. He said, but let your heart be established with meat. Let it be established with meat, with the strength, the soundness of Torah, and not this little wishy-washy boy stuff. Can I proceed? He said, those things have not profited them that have been occupied therein. So tell me, when you gather in your little spiritual social circles, and you call upon the demons of darkness, where have you profit? If me fellowshipping with the man, we're walking together, we enjoy one another's presence, then there should be a profiting for not only him, but for me as well. And so when one sees someone that they are prospering, they see the profit in the man, they see the difference of his walk, they see the difference of his stride, they see the difference of his mannerism. It hasn't profit them a damn thing. Because their heart has not been established in the power of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. Let me teach you a little bit, all right? You all say, slow down, preacher. Come on, say, slow down. Say, slow down. Okay. We don't trust nobody. Trust no man, but you trust the doctor. You trust your wife to get naked in front of him. You don't know what that damn beast is doing. You trust him to cut on you. You trust him to say, you got this and you believe him. But when the message of Yah says you, we're filthy, we deny that. Isn't that amazing? The strange doctrines, the strange clothing. Let me speak on this before I go farther. There are those that, because they think that they have on what they call their... Hebraic clothing. <clears throat> so a man that dressed like me, he has on strange clothing. So his clothing is idolatrous. It is pagan. So he cannot present and offer the offering that is correct before Yah. And you find these same ones that call themselves Hebrews. They wear the same kinds of turbans like the sheets of India. Hell, their clothing is no different than the heathen Muslims. 
The sandals don't even look as nice as the Muslim sandals because they're handmade. And they all dress in the same garment. Whether he is a Hindu, whether he is a monk, whether he is Buddhist, whether he is Hebrew, whether he is Islamic. And so they believe that that gives them uh, a presentation or a presenting uh, that they are superior and they are righteous. And believe me, they all think that way. And we are so ignorant, we don't know how to shoot them down. Strange clothing. Well, is the Muslim clothing strange? It looks just like yours. They wear the six six the frills at the bottom as well. Are their clothing strange? And if their clothing is strange, then your clothing is strange. And so they wear these cheap turbans that uh, it's one thing about the Levi. They, their clothing was made of the finest of wool and the finest of linen. I have three linen t-shirts. You can't hand wash them. They must be dry clean. It is what we call the fine linen of Italy. The finest of wools come in this period of time. They come from Italy. The finest of cotton. The way it is hand woven and the threads to make, they may take a, they may take a thousand threads to make one square inch. That is what produced the finest. And they walk around in these Neapolitan suits and they think it gives them a strength of superiority and the knowledge of Yah. So we go to the prophet of Savonia or Tisephaniah and he speaks of a time that will come. Now the people are too ignorant to understand he is speaking of the end times. And it's more than just one's apparel. That doesn't mean your daughter's dressed with your tight pants on. It's an abomination. Y'all says when a woman puts on a garment like a man, it is an abomination unto Yah. And so when a man sleeps with another man, it is an abomination. When a woman sleeps with a woman, it is an abomination. For you to murder your babies and abort them, that's an abomination. So don't think that that's what Yah means. We're talking about the strange doctrines because there are strange garments on them. Let me begin here in the book of Sephonia to Sephaniah. Chapter 4, chapter 1, verse 4. I want, to, I want to move expeditiously. And this was a repudiation, a threatening unto his nation, Yahuda, because of their Be'el worship, because of their lordship uh, and the superiority of their Be'el over the strength uh, of Yah's Torah. And that's what we have done. We have come into the way of Yah and we still hold on to those damnable doctrines uh, of Christianity uh, and Catholicism uh, and the Church of God in Christ uh, and the Methodists uh, and the Pentecostal. That's what we do. And this is the strange garment, uh, and that's why we can offer up the offering of Yah, the Zebak, uh, the sacrifice, the offering uh, of praise, uh, of adulation unto Yah. This is what he's dealing with here. Sophonia, Tisiphania, chapter 1, verse 4, quickly. And yet there are those that say, the man got on a nectar, he got on a strange garment. Well, how strange is your garment? The Muslims wear what you wear. The Hindus wear what you wear, so is their garment kadosh? Is their garment kadosh? Listen to what the Torah says. Yah says unto Yisrael, you cannot allow your Leba, your mind to hold fast to the doctrines of deceit of Be'el. That you have learned in Christianity, damn the vile, filthy Holy Ghost. Damn Jesus Christ, I am anti-Christ. You're looking at anti-Christ. You don't have to pick Mr. Obama. You don't have to pick Reagan. I am anti-Christ. I'm against that damn lie. Oh, people are afraid. Oh, he said he's anti-Christ. You chicken little coward. I am pro-Hamashiach. I'm the one that has been anointed by Yah. Damn the church. It is a vile thing. I'm in the bay at the body of Yah in Yahshua. 
So here's the Antichrist man. Take a picture, download it, and send it. Please send it throughout the internet, the world. I'm not offended. I don't mind. He blasphemed. I sure do blaspheme the damn holy lie. A ghost, a disassembled body, the spirit of the dead, the orb. You seeking life from the dead. And the Torah talks about that, the orb. And they say it's the Holy Ghost. And the San Chris language said it is the Hada. That's where much of your religious jargon come from, from that vile language of Hinduism. And we need men to repudiate it. I'm not afraid to say damn the Holy Ghost and damn Jesus Christ. Where those are the Edomite, anyone that rejects Yeshua's name is a damn Edomite because you make mockery. And that's why Yah is going to destroy the Edomites because they have made mockery of Yisrael. Yah said, look at that damn thing you call a God. Look at you. Yah says, just don't worry. I'm going to break their backs. Don't worry about a thing. I got them. Leave them alone. Don't try to uh, challenge them. That's what he tells us. That's what the prophet prophet or the Nobi Obadiah taught. I'll teach it one day. He says here in Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 4. <clears throat> Yah says, I will stretch out my yard, my heart upon Yahuda, and upon all the inhabitants of Yerushalayim. And he uses the word karath. I will cut off uh, the remnant or the residue. He's going to cut off the remnant of Baal. There's a remnant of Baal. It is the power of this spirit, uh, of this divinity of uh, the Phoenician God that they call Baal. And that's what Jesus Christ is. Uh, he is a Baal. He is no different than the drug lord. He is no different than the landlord that lords your house, lord you, uh, lords your energy because they command you to work uh, and to make retribution unto them. No different. That's what, do they call them landlords? Do the drug lords run the community? Do they run the hood? Yes. Are there not lords in poor nations? Whether you go down into South America, to Brazil, to Chile, do not they run those communities? Are not the drug lords running Mexico down there? They're running it just like the drug lords and the thieves are running this, the political lords here. Make you think you put somebody in power. Mr. Hussein Obama. He says unto them, I'm going to destroy the residue of Baal from this place. He says, in the name of Kara, or the name of Kama, he said, there is an idolatrous prince, just like the Pope, this effeminate man, this bastard, birthed out of hell, and bring the people unto the Lord of this Catholic whorehouse. Just like this damnable thing we call Allah and this prophet Muhammad uh, that brings the subject and the subjection unto the power of hell. Uh, just like Hinduism uh, and just like the most virable, vile prostitute uh, of all lords, uh, this damnable Christianity doctrine uh, of hell uh, that purports a lie, Jesus uh, is a damn lie. Yeah. I'm not afraid to say it. Kill me, y'all. I have no problem with that. I die. Let me die in truth. I won't defend a lie. Even as a wicked man, I didn't like liars. I've always had the ability to retain what people say to me. Well, I just said, okay, man, okay, that's, I won't argue with you. Let it be. I retain what people say. I told Ak Yosef when his uncle Yosef came to visit him, I know exactly what he had on. I can remember that. He had on some Italian-like shoes with little heels like that, and they were black. I know exactly what color slacks he had on. I can tell you how he walked with me and where we parted. I remember things. Can I proceed? He said, you have allowed this vile Hamad, uh, this idolatrous priest, uh, he said, leading Kohim uh, of idolatry with the Kohan. He said, this priest is a, a master of idolatry, and you've allowed that in the midst. Now, we're dealing with a time this time. Uh, we're dealing with the perfection of the Sheha, the worship of Yah. 
And our minds don't worship God because we try to do it uh, in the preference and the reference uh, of our damn Christian doctrines. Uh, I can tell those that have come out of Baptist whole houses, uh, they visit us, they sit like the Baptists do. Uh, I can tell those that come out of Pentecostal whole houses, they would, ah, go, 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 go. I can tell. I know. You don't have to tell me. I'm not looking uh, for information on you. And so we're dealing with a mind that has been clothed and dressed. I will show us. Just bear with me. Well, I got all my double breast suit. It doesn't mean a damn thing, man. You probably spent too much money for it. That's all. Give some of the money to ya. How about that? I got a brother out there in California. He said, man, when you hurt me, you can make me give up everything. Rolex watch, diamond rings. I got a Lexus I don't even drive. It's just parked. You make me start catching the bus. Come on, he, you see a picture of him. You know he was a big dad in his days, in the sense. For a man like him, where well, you can get by wearing skin suits, gator suits, leather suits. You're talking. And you do it unabashedly. I, I, I'm not wearing no leather suit. Not me. And I know I have the physical symmetry to get by in it, too. And as far as the world, yes, it is, mama. The world would think, boy, he's holding that. But with a man like that, he said, I wore skin suits, he, thousand, he said, preacher, you messed my world up. You turned it upside down. Alligator shoes. He said, I spent money. I was fly. He said, and you messed it up, but I, I love you, man. I appreciate it. Listen to this. Yah also says here in verse 5, uh, and them that worship the host, now look at what he's dealing with now. They're worshiping the host uh, of Hashem uh, upon the housetop. Uh, they find the little high places. Uh, they find uh, the little exuded, hubris, uh, uh, high places of their mind. Uh, and they think that they got knowledge. Uh, and they began to produce strange doctrine. Yeah, brother, I know about that. You know, I was reading that scripture and you know uh, it spoke to me. I was reading that what you preached on. They get in their high places and they cover themselves uh, in their high places. Uh, listen, uh, and them that worship and that swear by Yah and they swear by Melcham. Who is Melcham? They offered the children in the valley of Hinnon to these demons of darkness. Just like parents today, they give their children over to the dark fire of hell. To strangers that teach their babies, to men that lay hands on them. To men that put them to sleep and a physiologist and they don't know a damn thing. I'm just going to be real with us, Israel. Yeah. And they trust them, but they don't trust Yah. We got to grow up. We got to get real and get strong. Let me die. Kill me, Yah. I don't say it as a coward. I die in this. I believe it. There are not too many people going to love me, so I understand. Listen to this. In verse 6. And them that they have sug, they have turned back. Three things what they have done. Listen to this. They have sug, they have backslid on Yah. They have backslid on the promises of Yah. And those that have not sought Yah, they have not interceded to seek Yah. They have turned back, they have not sought Yah, and neither have they inquired of the messenger. Where is Yah? Am I right? They have not come before the altar of Yah to cleanse themselves. And Yah says, because of that, you've allowed this idolatrous mind. You have clothed your mind with every kind of design passion of the world. The world controls your emotion. That is the spirit of Nahash. It controls you. It binds you. And we think we are free. We're not free, Yisra'ya. This world is not free. Only whom your shoe makes free. Is free indeed. And the only way you're going to be free in your shoe, you must continue. It is Torah. You must labor. You must lahag. You must study to show yourself approved of unto Yah. You don't say things that are not according to the Torah. He said, if you continue in my Torah, in the Dabah, the Dabarim of Yah, he said, then you shall be my disciples or my Talmudems indeed. And you shall yada. You shall experience the power of the truth. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall separate you from that dress rehearsal of that strange mind you have uh, of the strange clothing that you are wearing 
He's got on a necktie, so what? I don't wear them, so what? You got on the same garment that the damn Muslims got on. Your hat is just like those of the sheik or the Sikh religion. Your dress is just like those. Those. You go out through India, their outfits are just like yours. You go out through the continent of Africa, just like yours. No different. And so your garment is supposed to have a pure protocol. And men buy into that. They, they think they're hearing something that is profound. No, what you're hearing today is profound. Because it is, a, it is beyond your ability to internalize, to dissect, and to disregard. That is what is profound. But a man, you're sure his name is profound. You cannot reject it. Damn the name of Jesus. I don't care if you get uncomfortable with me. Go and watch television. You spend enough time in front of it anyway. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you think you're strong? Get out of my face. Hallelujah. Verse 7. Yah says, keep silence at the presence or the poor name, the face of Yah, the master Yahweh. Now this is what the whole thing is about here in Sephonia. It is not what we think is strange clothing because a man has on a necktie. It's not that. Listen now. Listen now. Listen. He says, uh, keep silence at the presence or in the face of Master Yah. What he says here, for the day of Yah is at hand. Is not this what the whole thing is about? It's about the day of Yah, his vengeance. It's about worship. It's about offering. It's about what they have brought unto Yah. If you come unto Yah with an offering, you have blood in your hands. Yah will not accept that. What does that imply? You have sin in your mind. You have ought against Yisrael. Yah, you're wicked. Yah, that's what Nahash teach you. That's why uh, when, when, when Yah came down into the gathering of the Gan, the garden, the place uh, of growth, of fertility and life, that's what Gan is. Uh, a Gan, he came down in the Gan of, uh, of, uh, of Hava. And when he came down, uh, what did they do? They hid themselves, didn't they? And he put them on a garment. He put them on a righteous garment, didn't he not? Uh, and you're sure, I will show you the garment that Yah tells us to labash, to put on. Uh, how do you put it on? Because uh, you put on some seats, seats uh, or you got your garments down to your feet. Uh, that's not what he is saying, Yisrael. Yeah. We need to get wisdom of the Torah. And we need to pray for the messengers of Yah. And we need to assist and help. So that he can stay strong and vibrant. We'll go on our way for our wicked kin folks. We'll go to the damn dog dead of thanks to their damn God. We'll interject ourselves among the damn pagan Christmas and all of that. You on your job, you will not offend those damn beasts when they raise up with something so vile and so damn pagan. You will not even say anything. And that's the damn truth. When they would look for me to bless their food, I would, I would be somewhere hiding. When I worked at IBM. Man, we looked at you. For, hey, preacher, where were you? Well, I was up in John Paddock's office. Can I move on? I will. He said, be silent at the presence of Yah, for the day is at hand. Now, this is what the Pacific is. The day is at hand. For Yah has prepared a Zabach. A sacrifice. And look what he does. And he bid. And Yah has bid. He has ama. He has cried as a herald. You got to look at key words and we don't look at that. He has prepared an offering. And he bids now. He has bid it. He has bid. He has kadash. He has bid his he has bid it. He has sent out the herald cry for the guests. Yoshua is the one that invites. He says, Yosipia, rise up. You have been invited unto the feast of Yah. But make sure your garment is right. He tells you what kind of garment to put on. Yeah. Listen to this. It says that it shall come to pass in the day of Yah. That's what we're talking about. I don't understand why when people come here, they don't come to me and challenge me. You've got something to say, come to me. Because they know I will dog them out. Look what it says. Is it talking about the day of Yah? 
It says, for it come to pass in the day of Yah's sacrifice, his uh, Zebach. He said that I will punish who the princes uh, and the king's children. Uh, and look, and all of such that are lavash, they have put on, uh, that are clothed with strange or nukria, 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 our minds are in strange for Yah. That's why when the term used that the husband and the wife, they are estranged. I want to show you, Yisrael. He's talking about the offering that we bring in the last day. We must be clothed in the mind of your shoe. There are going to be those that come before here with rags on. This stupid generation. That is kinukri, that which is strange. And the word nukri, you've heard me teach on that. He said it is the spirit of adultery. It is the garment of trying to hold on to your Christian ways. I know what I'm saying, son. I labor. I labor. I was up at 2 a.m. one morning. I said, yeah, how is it that we're so gullible? He uses the words nukri. Nuk, nuk, nukri. It is a, an adulterous conscience. That is what is strange. Yah doesn't love an adulterous attitude because he is our husband man. I've always preached as a young ignorant preacher. I say if there's one thing that caused Yah to kill eight people, that is that spirit of unfaithfulness. He says, so they come in this garment pretending they love me. They got on their pilastery. They got on their garment that flow. They got on their seek seek. And yet they don't give a damn about me. So he uses the word nukri, nukri. They come in their strange garments. They come in their nukri, their strange, it's an adulterous garment because they will grin in your face and they will stick the knife in your back. You can be kind to them and they will rob you. You can treat them and entreat them like an ox and they will entreat you like a beast. They will speak villainly against you. I know what I'm saying. That's right, my Emma, Daphne. I've been around, aren't you glad I've been around a while? I've experienced things. And I know what I'm talking about. Can I prove it, my Zachin Yaramiya? I must have line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little, right? You know why I must do that, why he said that, right? Because our minds are wicked. We just don't believe him. That's why we got to do it that way. So I'll do it that way. He says, uh, he says, and those are the new creed that they have strange. Uh, Nalbosh, or, or the garments are strange, their minds are clothed with a strange doctrine. That's what this is. And we're so gullible, we believe that because one got on uh, a, a, a gray suit, he should have had on a white suit, uh, that he's wrong. That is so silly. I, I don't understand the immaturity of this generation. And look at this, you know it's about worship because uh, he says in verse 9, in the same day, in the same day also, will I pour out, I will punish uh, all those that leap upon uh, the miftah. What is the threshold? See, if I ask us that, I won't put us to that shame, Zarkadia Ramaya. He puts us to shame. He said, answer that. See, I answer it for you. You ask someone, what is the threshold? And you know what the ignorant man will always do? They will try to answer they will not say, I don't know, because they're hubris, they're full of pride. They will always try to answer, to show you they're smart, but they're, they're dumb as hell. A wise man, he, he studies before he opens his mouth. He said, threshold, miftah, I haven't heard of that. I know I've read it, but what does it mean? Hallelujah. As they that jump here on the altar of Yah, send me your money, send me your tithes, send me all your money. He said they do that to fill the master's house. And he said they do that to fill the master's house with Hamas, with violence, and also with mirma or deceit, the tongues of deceitful. And they fill the house. Who's their master? Be'el, the Lord Jesus. So they fill his house with lies and, and deceit. And so it is about a day and an hour, listen, that we have been invited to one of the most prominent festivities of all, the wedding feast of Yerushalayim. It's going to take place there when new Yerushalayim come. He has invited us and we must dress accordingly. What, what do you think? 
It, what do you think you're going to put on if you invited to that feast? You're going to go and mama going to do me a, a Mammy Me $3 suit, $12 for a jacket. Come on. As a matter of fact, it was $8. She's going to do me a Mammy Me suit. Are you going to have your $1,000 or $1,500 suit made in $8,000 alligator shoe? That's stupid. We got to have the garment on right. Did you not see the word? I used the word he had bid, right? He had bid the guests to come. He had bid them to come to bring the offering in the last day. And that is what Nahash says. I, I'm right. I'm superior. I know more of the Torah than you. And it goes about to pr impress the minds of the simple with little pieces of this, little pieces of that. With no thoroughness of anything. And people are so gullible. You know how gullible we are. You go to the store, they say, you want to taste some of this? You don't give me a look taste, is that right? So that tastes nice. Give me some of that. I like that. So they give you just a little bit and we think we got something. We need the wholeness of Yah's Torah. We need the fullness of Yah's truth, Yisrael. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, call all, every word that comes out of the mouth of Yah. And so with the strange doctrines, we're so easily seduced uh, unto the subtleties of hell. The words of Hashatam were, were not powerful when he spoke to Hava. It was Nakash, Nahash. We're talking about the last days. Listen up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They all have been bid. They have been Kadash. They have been set apart. Well, Yahshua gives us an account here. Turn quickly in the book of Matithia, Matthew, chapter 22, <clears throat> verse 2. It says, the Melchuts of Hashemah, the kingdom of heaven, uh, is like a certain king which made a marriage, uh, or a Hathrunah. He made a marriage for his son. And he sent forth for his avidim to call them uh, that were bidden. Is not that what Zephaniah was talking about? He says here uh, in, uh, in verse 7, uh, he has bid. Did he not use that word? Did he use the same word in Zephaniah, Zephaniah 1 7? Uh, he said he has bid. Did he not say that? We see in Matithia, one prepares a wedding feast uh, and he sent forth his avidim, his servants, uh, to bid. To bid. Listen now, that is, one of the, that is one of the words that is used frequently here. In order for us to understand what Sephoria uh, uh, is talking about, we got to examine every word, Yisraya. And it takes a laboring man. It takes a man that when you're building a house, you got to labor. Jacques and Yaramaya use this as an analogy all the time. This building where we built this, you don't see how we had to dig down. Huh? Oxymion said, so you got to dig. I said, man, that's far enough. No, no, no. And don't see all the blocks laid up here to get it all even back there. We don't see that. We don't see that. We don't see what it took to build this building and all these other buildings. Uh, that big building. We don't see what it took because you were not out, out there laying. I said the blocks we laid around here. That was some of the hardest blocks. Huh? I said let's do this together. You grab that and I grab this in. I'm mud. All right, let's do it together. Oh, he was strong enough. He grabs them like that. But I say, these things are heavy. Even though they were so, were they so light? Oh, stop. Moving on. So he sent forth his avidim to call them, Matithia 22, 3, and to bid to the wedding, uh, and they will not come. They will not dress themselves. We, we should not come before the altar of Yahweh's sin. We should not come into the presence of Yah with our hubris, uh, moody, wicked attitude. With our self-righteous attitude. We should not come into the gates of Yerushalayim uh, with sin in our hearts. Yeah. Yeah. Yah's house uh, is not a place for smickering and laughter and damn folly. We come to offer the right offering. Uh, it is the government our minds are uh, strange for Yah. That's why we can do the damn folly we do. Uh, they text in church now. They answer their phones. What a damn abomination. But I guarantee you the beasts don't do it on their jobs. They're on the internet in these whole houses. Moving. He said, I bid them to the wedding. Verse 4. Again, he sent forth the other servant saying, Tell them which are bidden. Yes, bid it us. Behold, I prepare my dead and my oxen and my fatlings are, are killed and all the things are already come to the marriage. 
But they made light of it. Don't we make light of y'all? I'm glad when he gets finished. Well, you go on. Watch the cartoons. That's all on Saturday. Watch the ball game. It's amazing that people can sit in front of a television for six, seven, eight hours in the presence of Yah. They can sit with friends and talk about nothing. When it comes to Yah, they don't give a damn. But they say they love him. Oh, I love Yah. I love hearing the word of Yah. I want to show you something. I will show you a simple thing if you sure you love Yah, especially us elderly men. I want to show you what the Torah says. And they made light of him, and they went their way. Well, I got to go over here. One went to his farm and another to his merchant. I got to go to Walmart. Look, they call it Black Friday. And these damn fools out here, two people in Tallahassee got shot. How stupid that is. I don't even like going out on that day. I don't go out on it. Nor that Sunday because I know the spirit is heavenly wicked. But they call it Black Friday. And these fools will wait in line for 10, 12, 15 hours. And yet we don't have the ability to bear. Well, I want to get my grand boy that Tonka Tonka toy. You silly old fool. Well, I don't mind waiting for my grandbaby because I love you. You don't give a damn about them, mama. You're a damn liar. If anyone say they have the power of love and they keep not the commandments of Yah, the midst of their damn liar. And the truth is not in them. If you know if the truth is not in you, you're the devil. So you don't give a damn. You got this phony thing you call love. Uh, and it is so damn superficial. If you love them, teach them the truth. Yeshua yeah. 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 said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Do what I command you. A daddy would say to his son, if you love me, boy, just obey what I tell you. A mother tell a daughter, if you love me, baby, don't obey what the world tells you. Uh, obey what I tell you. Yeah. Verse 6. It said, and the remnant took. His servants, uh, and they treat him spitefully, and they kill him. That's what we do to Yahshua. We kill him. That's what we do to one another. But when the king heard thereof, Almighty Yah, he was angry. His Ebra, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies, and he destroyed the murderers, and he burned up the city. Then said Yah, he says, uh, he's going to burn up Babylon. He's going to tear up Babel. Then he's going to say to his Novi, the Novi M, he says to them, uh, the wedding is ready, but they which are bidden, again the word bidden, isn't it? Hadash. Those that are bidden, they that have been amas, spoken of to come, uh, he said they were not worthy. Who is worthy to come to? You think that everyone goes to the wedding of one of those little effeminate boys over there in Britain when they get married? There are tens of millions that send for invitations and they don't go. But this wedding, you just can't come in here. you got to be bidden. And you can't have on the strange. Your mind can't be clothed with this folly of your strange doctrine. He said, go therefore into the highways and, uh, and as many as you find. Uh, he said, bid them. Yisra'ya scattered throughout the bra- realm of the earth. He said, you tell them to come on. So those servants, they went into the highways and gathered together all that they found. He says, both bad, or that means the wicked can come. No, they had on the garment that was strange, he would tell you. He said, you were bitted, but you, you, you were called of Yah, but your garment is not right. He said, both bad and tough, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came to see the guests, he saw three there a man. Which had not on the wedding garment. He had on a strange garment. His mind was not wedded to Yah. His mind was not betrothed unto Yah. His mind was not his spouse unto Yah. There was no love for Yah. See, he had a strange garment on. That's what uh, Sophonia, Tisaphania talks about. Uh, that they're bringing this strange garment. Uh, and they come in, in the presence of Almighty Yah. With this nukri, the spirit of adultery. This false uh, delusion, uh, contempt for Yah. Say they love him. Uh, and they're doing every kind of wicked thing. Uh, it's important, my, uh, my being, my child of Yisrael, Yah, To understand definitives of words. Uh, and that's why Yah caused this man's heart to dig deeply and deeply constantly all the time. I'm that ignorant. I'm not, I don't have the self-assurance of what I know. I don't know a dumb thing. But I know what his mind knows. He saw that this guest did not have on the wedding garment. You think because he had on a necktie? So stupid. He did not have on the proper garment. And he said to him, friend, how is it that you come uh, not having on the wearing garment? You came in here and your garment was not right? I got to show you what the wearing garment is in order for you to get dressed right. We got to get dressed. You got to get dressed for the wedding feast. 
We got to put on the right clothes. We got to labash, put on. That's what labash is, put on clothing to dress yourself. Bofan, and the servant was speechless. And then, this is what Yah says. Then Yah, the king said to the servant, he said, bind this bastard. Bind the mamzir. He said, bind him both hand and foot and take him away. And cast him into out of darkness where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. He's a wicked child of hell. Get him out of my presence. His garment, he came in as though that he had the right garment. But when the eyes of y'all looks upon it, uh, you may hide it in your damn wicked heart. Uh, but when y'all sees it, uh, he said the garment looked right. It looked as though that the garment fitted the protocol, uh, but it just wasn't right. Uh, it was the garment of an adulterous whore. It was the nuclear. It just wasn't right. And you may think you're dressed right in your damn self-righteousness. And you prod with the wicked. Your thoughts are wicked. Your mind denounces the power of you. And you side with everything that is wicked. And when Yah inspects by the power of the Ruach HaKodesh, she says, not the garment. He bid it them. Sophonia says, and he bids, he ama, he uttered, he spoke. He bids us to come. Come. You that are thirsty, a burden, and heavy laden, come to the truth. Hallelujah. May I proceed a little further? I shall. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is, I want to read this quickly. I don't want to elaborate too long, but this is Yehu, the mighty warrior of Yah. And his name, Yehu, Yahu, it implies simply this, that Yah, he is the one. Yah is he. I like that. We're dealing with worship and sacrifices and strange garments, are we not? Listen to this in First Melachim, Second Kings, Second Kings, Second Kings, chapter ten, verse eighteen. You got to hear this. Let me move quickly. All right. I greet you all that listen. Ak Frank and We hope you got the package. Yeah, Barak, how you all doing? So kind. They lived in the hills of West Virginia. He only goes out once a month. We went out the last time he got some candy for the children. He wants to send it for them. I said, send it, man. Beautiful man, the way he responds. His issue. They're not people of wealth and financial resolve, but they give so kindly. And that's why the reason we're able to do this, Yisrael. Listen to this. Second Kings 10, 18. It says, and you who gathered all the people together, and said unto them, uh, he said, Ahab, uh, he served Baal, he served the Lord Jesus. Did not Shalomo bring in the strange wives and the strange gods? He said, Ahab, he served Baal. Uh, he says a little. Listen now. Me'at. He served him with not great fervor, but he served him. He said, but Yahoo, or he shall serve Baal uh, with Rabbah, with much. Do you all hear that? He was subtle and shrewd. He said that what he did was a nothing. But watch how I serve Baal. Now therefore call to me all the prophets of Baal, all his servants, all his priests. He said let none be missed. For I have a great sacrifice. Is that not what y'all talked about in the book of Sophonia and offering? Did he not talk about that in offering? A sacrifice, I use it. Forgive me, Zakaya But is not that what I started off with? Is not the offering of the Zadaka? Is not that a part of the Shahad, the worship of Yah? And we see this throughout the whole Torah. He says that uh, I have a great sacrifice to do unto Baal. Uh, whosoever shall be missing, uh, he shall not live. I want everyone here. But Yah who did it, uh, he did it with Uchba, he did it with subtlety. He did it with, uh, say, you know, I said what I said, but I got an agenda. He did, it with, he did it with the craftiness. That it was so smooth, 
Just like a slick hustler on the street. He talked so smooth, he said, girl, he said, the, the rainbow cover your head and your feet look like the pearls of the ocean. If I could just dance with you, what would that do for me? I, my heart, my mind will swirl like a vortex. Just give me the moment, the time, let me do that. And she goes, hee, hee, hee. <laughs> you think that that would not draw? Boy, you all just don't know this preacher mind, do you? To the intent that he might destroy the worshipers of Baal. Yehu said, proclaim a solemn assembly for Baal. And they proclaimed it. And Yehu, he said, through all Yerushalayim, uh, through Yisraya, and all the worshipers of Baal, they came. So there was not a man left that did not come. That they came into the house of Baal, and the house of Baal was front from front to end. So you know these houses of Baal, you go to uh, T.D. Jakes on tomorrow. You go to the long daddy dog fag in Atlanta. Talk to me. You go to the Benny Hunt, the hitch dog, Jew baby dog hen. Talk to me, you might as well. You go to the creeping dollar with the crap. He crept into your house. He's crept low. Silly women. That these are those that creep into houses. Uh, uh, silly women that are laid with sit and say, baby girl, uh, I want to dance with you. Oh, you make my heart pound. And so it pounds. I want to dance with. That's. Talk to me. <laughs> That's what they do, my path. That's why I don't play with women, because when you start talking, you get silly. You find yourself disregarding. And there are those that they think, well, you, you know, I've had so many women come here. Why the brothers don't talk to us? Because they don't need to talk to you. You undoubtedly got something you want someone to recognize. You look like a bag of flesh, woman. Sit down. You ain't fine. Shut your mouth. But the brothers didn't talk to me. They don't need to talk to you. We talk to each other. How about that? Listen to this. So he sent for all the worshipers of Baal uh, in verse 21. And, the, and, and they all came. And so these whole houses are full. Are they not? Won't they be filled tomorrow? Yeah. These are the houses of Baal. Verse 22. And he said unto him, uh, that was over, look at this, he talks about the meltacha, or the vestry. That's what preachers, they have the vestry, don't they? They have the big long robes and all, and that's what the vestry is. He talked to those, why he talked to those over the vestry? Because they must put on the right garments to offer up the offering unto Baal. We must have on the right garment to offer up the offering unto Yahshua HaMashiach, unto Yah. Listen to me, Yisrael, Yah, I know what I'm preaching. I know what I'm teaching. I understand the Pacifics. I, I understand the dynamics of it. I understand the minutiae of it, Yisrael. The smallest uh, and those details that we think are not valuable, they are valuable. He said he got, he, I want that one that's over the vestry, uh, over the wardrobe, or what clothing uh, should wear, how they should wear it. Uh. He said bring forth the vestment. Uh, now that is what the nukri is, it's a clothing. Uh, it is the type of clothing that when, when one goes to the nightclub, baby, they don't put, they, they put on their finest, don't they? Uh? When I would go out to jam all night, I, I wanted my gator shoes to be, sh my shoes to be shining. I, I want my suit. They put it in the cleaners on Friday. They get it out Friday evening, so they want to be sharp. You understand? And then they go and wash the ride and make sure it's right. And then Saturday morning, they get up and wash that bad boy again. Make sure it's shining, the rims and the smokes and all that. And then they get fly that evening and put on the big brim sky because when they walk in, they want everyone to see them. So there's a garment in the house of Yah. We need strong men. We need mass. That a man can listen to one and say, be quiet. Your boy. And when you say that, fear will intrepidate them. And they will get quiet. If you're a strong man, sure they will. Can I tell you the story I'm going on? Back in the days I belonged to a gym. The Y. I mean, they had cats in there. They were, one, his name was Warren. He was so big. And when everybody walked in the gym, they were intimidated by him because this guy was about 275 pounds. He had arms like that thousand. He wore a suit that when you walked in, you couldn't help but notice him. 
He didn't talk to nobody. He didn't speak to nobody. He was in a trance when he would come in there. And so when he would see me walking, he would always just look at me. And when he would just look at me, I would, I would respond this way. And do you know what? He responded the same way. As far as our conversation went. As far as it went. He was big. He didn't want no spot until he got the 550 pounds. Benton, son. He was big. And one day, he worked for a vendor for IBM. I went to lunch and there he was. And he broke loose like a like a horse out of the stall. Hey, man, hi. Big as he was, he sold Avon products. Stop. I'm not selling no Avon. He sold Avon product, big as he was. He came out to my table. He sat with me, and he just talked. Listen now. So how you doing, Warren? Introduced myself. He knew me from the gym. That next evening I went to the gym, he was there, standing in his same spot. Menacing. And so when I walked in, he looks at me, and this time I didn't have to go, he goes. And I go. That's how I spoke to the man. So no one else would even get on the bench he worked on, because no one could... He wasn't taking no plates. So when he starts stacking them plates, get out of the way. Everybody was scared. Everybody, walked away. Everybody got away from him. He was a strong man, powerfully built. And so when a strong man, when a strong man rules in a city, then the city shall be at Shalom. We got weak men. We're weak, and we just won't take the resolve that our Zarkin taught us. Let us say we're strong. Where did I stop? In verse 1 in 2 King. 23, 23 right. <clears throat> he says, uh, uh, and they brought him the vesture in the last of 22. <laughs> and Yahoo, he, Yahoo, <clears throat> Yahoo, uh, he went, uh, and Yahanaradad, uh, the son of Rechab, uh, in the house of Baal, they went into the, the dirty house, and said to the worshippers of Baal, uh, search and look and see if there be uh, none of the servants of Yah. But the worshippers of Baal, they say, make sure there's no one that's here but Baal servants. Make sure that you all got your clothing on. Make sure every man's dressed. You got on your garment that is proper for the sacrifice. That was an offering for the Kohan. When he went into Yah's house in the bed to offer up the offering. He had to have a certain dress. They did not wear linen that you find in, the, in, in TJ Mack. That was not, that's not fine linen. That's trash. That's not linen, Yisrael, Yah. They didn't wear these old polyester turbans that you see many wearing today. It's amazing that one group dressed this way and they would say that group, although they call themselves Hebrews, uh, that they, they dress in strange garments. That's how stupid they are. That's how immature they are. They're stupid. One group calls on Yahuwah and the next group calls on the loud Jesus. That's, a, that, that's the spirit their minds have been... Dressed with the nukri, it's an adulterous mind. You can't be faithful to two. It, it would be like me when my Israel comes in the house. I don't call her Raphael or either Jean. I call her Susie Bluebell. Hey, girl, you think she's going to like that? Shartisha's the fine thing. No, there's some Shartisha you've dealt with. Sharuka boom. Hold up, you've gone too far now, Negro. That's the truth. So that's, she will determine there's an, an adulterous spirit in this man. He has done something. He pretend this way, but he's a damn liar. And they're filthy as hell. Listen, Yisrael. So what he did, he went, in verse 24, he went, and they went into the offering to offer the sacrifice and the burnt offering. And Yahoo appointed 80 men outside, and they were bad boys. They were bad to the bone. He said, if any of the men who I have brought into this house, they escape your hand, and he is let go, his life shall be for your life of him. He said, if you let him out, you're going to die. That's what a mighty man does. He said, damn you, get out of my face. Go with the pig. 
Well, I just need him. No. He said, if he escape, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to burn you in hell with him. Listen. And it came to pass as soon as they had made an end of the offering and the burnt offering that Yahoo said to the guards of the captain, go in and knock out, damn it, kill them all. Cut the heads off, damn it, kill every last one of them. Kill the young men, the old, kill them all. He said, and let none escape. And they smote with the edge of the sword. And the guard and the captains cast them out. And they went to the city of the house of Baal. How did they know that they were the sons of Baal? By the vesture, by the, by the garments of their offering, Yisrael. You can't tell a Muslim from a Hebrew. And most folks that dress like that, the first thing they think, they are Muslims. Because it is associated with the Muslims. Most people that see those that dress like that in these cities, they think they're Muslims. And there are 1.6 billion Muslims. That's that many Catholics. They're all going to hell. Over a billion Hindus, every last one of you. Can, you can get offended at that. They're all going to hell. They're going to hell. All Catholics go to hell. All Hindus go to hell. All Muslims go to hell. All Jesus worshipers go to hell. Few that be, few, me, uh, me, uh, few that be that find it, few, few. It's not many. For Yah so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. See there, and right down from that He said, "I pray for them, and I don't pray for the world. All that is in the world." I going to teach you on that on Wednesday. I will show you what He was saying. How such a construed scripture. Even when you look up the word in the Greek cosmos, it has nothing to do. It, it, it has to do with the beauty. I always tell us that Yah loved his creation. He loved the stars and all that. So when you see the word cosmos, uh, it's talking about the stars and the celestial bodies. It's not just talking about some filthiness that we have performed here on this earth. But Yah put man on, on the earth. He saw that the imagination of man, it was only evil continuously. Is our imagination evil? Everything you imagine is evil. Everything you imagine, you exalt it. But well, I don't see what's wrong with that. Well, y'all says it's wrong, but I don't see it. Quickly. And he said, and they brought forth the pillars of the Metzeba, in verse 26, uh, and out of the house of Baal, and they burned them. And they broke down the pillars of Baal, and they broke down the house of Baal, uh, and they made a dross house to this day. This Yahoo, he destroyed, Yahoo destroyed Baal uh, out of Yisrael. He destroyed them. In verse 22, he says, bring forth the vestments of the clothing of the same chapter. We got to bring forth those clothing uh, that we have allowed our minds to be clothed and burn them in the fire of hell. Can I show you how we get dressed? Let me begin here. In the book of Romeo, the book of Romans. We are commanded, Yisra, you have to put on. And the word put on is labash, to dress in clothing, uh, to furnish. Uh, he says in Romans 13, 14, uh, he says, but put you on. Yeshua HaMashiach, and make no provision for the flesh uh, to fulfill the less of. Uh, how do we put Yeshua on? You put on Jesus, uh, you put on the damn gods, uh, but how do we put Yeshua on? Uh, Zokin Yeramiah will drive you. I'm going to show you. Zokin Yeramiah, he makes you feel ashamed. I just say preach, man. Even in all my ears, I say preach, man. At least I say it in a way that he may uh, think I know. He commands us to put on, doesn't he? That's to labach. When you got up this morning, you bathed, you put on clothing, didn't you not? He commands us to put on. How do we put him on? See, we have put on a garment, but it's a strange garment. It is a nukri. It is not faithful to Yah. That's why when he said that everything that have breast praise, he said, Yah, you can't do that. But hell at the ball game, you can't do that. In all of my life, listen, I went to one NBA basketball game. And I went, there was a brother, he died, he died of AIDS. He worked for this company, they had, they had center court, 16 rows up. Now that's a seat there. His corporation had bought season. And I said, brother, I'll go with you one time. But I was, I felt like a dog going in that cauldron of sin. 20 some years ago. That's when the original Hornets were in Charlotte. And I watched those people back then, they were doing the wave. I sat there where they did the national anthem and all. I just sat there. 
And you tell me those folks, they look at me, boy, drinking that beer. You better get up, boy. This is a nice night. I did not move. And after the third quarter, I said, look, let's go up. Let's, it's time to go. But they were enthused about the hornets. They were exude about the hornets. But yet we don't. They put on, do they put on their paraphernalia, the regala? They put on heads. They do all that, don't they? So he commands us to put on your shoe. How do we put him on? How do we labash your shoe? How do we do it? Can I tell you? Will you believe me if I read how you do it? You think it's difficult to do? It's easy. If I tell you, will you believe me? I'll let Yah tell you. This is how you put him on. In Galusia, Galatians, Galusia, chapter 3. This is how you put him on. Hold that in Romans uh, 13, 14. Uh, he told us the labash to put on, did he not? So he says in Galatians 3.27, For as many of you that have been immersed into Hamashiach has put on your shoe. That as many of us that have uh, been immersed uh, into your shoe Hamashiach, we have put him on. Isn't that easy? That's why the value of being immersed is so important. You see, men will say things, but they're ignorant, my ach. I'm a student above all things. I'm a student before I'm a teacher. I'm a student before I'm a preacher. I'm a student before I'm a messenger of Yah. Isn't that easy? He said, go get the vestas. Go get the clothing of bear. Put on your shoe. How do you put them on? By being immersed in him. Not just the water immersing is a vital part. But you must put that mind on. That's how we put him on. Do you put clothing on? Do your parents say, uh, Sarah, I put your shoes on? So that means Labash should put it on? Isn't that what it means? So we must put him on my path. We have to put your shoe. And we, we must our mind into him and his activities. Uh, these are the strange garments uh, when we don't put him on in the morning. What we put on our emotions, our attitude, uh, our stupidity. We angry, we mad as hell. Uh, we put on the garment of our folly of our bosom because folly rests in the bosom of a fool. Uh. That's what we put on. So we immerse ourselves in your shoe, uh, and then we won't come with some strange attitude, some strange, stupid doctrine, some strange words. Talk to me, Israel. Yeah. Can I go a little farther? Here we go. Uh, in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians 4.21. This is how we put on your shoe, because he is our garment of Sadiq. Yeah. Ephesians 4.21. If it be so that you have heard him, you have heard Yah, and have been taught by Almighty Yah, as the truth is in your shoe, listen to what he says in 22. He said that you put off, to take it off. Concern the former conversation, your life, your attitude of the old man. Something gets wrong, Israel. You're the same old man yesterday that you were today. Something gets wrong tomorrow if you got the same attitude you got today, you had it tomorrow. So you got to put off that old man. Uh, he said, which that man is corrupt. That man is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Uh, you that always lust, you want this, you want that. It, your own lust deceive you. You think you love Yah, you don't love Yah. Hallelujah. He says in verse, he says in verse 23, and be renewed, be hadas, in the ruach of your mind, and that you put on. You clothe yourself in what the new man, the man that's after the image of your shoe, Hamashiach, which is after your shoe created in Sadiq and Emat, truth that set us apart. You got to put on the new man. You got to put on the man of Sadiq. You got to put on that new man. The man that is revived by the testimony of Yahshua. You can't continue to walk the way you walk. Your attitude, something is wrong among the people of Yah. Wives never change. Husbands never change. Too insensitive to understand the, vit the vitalness of their application or how they, their activities, how it produce death and separations. There have been men in the bed at home and the wife says something. He said, damn this. He gets up. He goes out to the club and there's some whore there waiting for him. It's the truth. That is the truth. I'm glad you're gone. That's what she says. Uh, now, nah, woman, don't do that to your husband. If he says something, just cry. Just get, get humble. Just humble yourself. Say you're right. Don't be so loquacious, bathetist. Don't be so talkative. That's one of the things that have destroyed many because they love to talk. 
Then when you begin to talk, you begin to lie. Then when you begin to lie, you want to impress. Oh, man, yeah, I did that. I did this. You liar. Man, I was, man, I, man, I was a player. Man, I had that what you had was a skank, man. Man, I was, man, I roll every day, man. What are you talking about? I, I, I played it. Liar. You were digging into everything else everybody else were. I was a pretty thing. You were a deceived thing, woman. So when I think about that beautiful beauty, my, my, it stays there. You're getting old, but it's still there. The lines are beautiful. The walk is not as crisp and sharp as it once was. You got the label a bit. So y'all's preparing you. Going home one day to my master Yeshua. Oh, I'm going home one day to my master Yahweh. Oh, prepare me, oh yeah, for the day is soon to come. I'm going home. One day and it won't be long, oh, it won't, oh, let my walk be right, in the name of Yahshua, let my walk be right, in the name of Yahshua, I've given you my love, give you my heart, soul and my mind. Let my walk be right unto you, Yahweh. Listen to this. Dress me right, oh, yeah. Dress me right, hallelujah. Dress me right, oh, yeah. Dress me right, Yahweh. Dress me right in your subtle, oh, yeah, cause you can lead yeah, to flow over me. Listen, she'll say this, I won't be sad all my day, going on home with yeah, won't be sad on that day, going home to my yard. Oh, rejoice, Israel, don't feel sad for me. Going home one day and it won't be long. That's all right. Hallelujah. You see, if I wanted to make money, as a surprise that people would call me an occult and all that, but I, I'm a stupid occult leader. Can't make no money here. If I wanted to make money and to drive fine vehicles, even in my age, I could have them rolling. I'm telling you, I know how to move the emotions. I, if I'd have kept saying, I had all of y'all crying in here. Talk to me, oh yeah, and your shoes name. Talk to me, talk to me. When I was in college, I took a class called public speaking. And I never forget the instructor says to me, she says, man, she said, you have a voice that will fill an arena. You have the command. You have the ability. See, I could have been a money speaker. She says, I recommend that you learn voice dictation. I don't need no voice dictation. Because you cannot lure the mass. That's what she said. She said that to me. She said, take voice dictation. No, I want to speak out of the voice of Yeshua. Damn voice dictation. So I'm a stupid occult leader with Come on, there's not that many listening to me. I'm glad too. Can I move on? Hallelujah. All right.
Well, he told us to put off the old man in order to put on this man of great strength in Ephesians 6.10. Look at this man. He said, after you've done everything you've done, finally my ach, my Yisraelite ach, he tell us to be strong. See, that's all we have to do. He said, finally, I want you to be strong. How? In the koach, in the power of Yah's might. You have no might of yourself, so we'll be strong in the power of Yah's might. And then he tells us to dress ourselves, shulabash. He tells us to put on the whole armor of the Kali. Dress yourself. Put on the whole armor of Yah. That you may be able to stand against the wicked workings of the sharp beams of Hashatan. You got to be able to stand against the devil. That's why we can't stand against the weakness of men. Because we have all armor that is not strong. A warrior, above all things, he makes sure his armor is on right. He got to make sure because he knows that he has a formidable foe. And he's set to defend the throne of Yah. And that's what we are set to defend. So we must have the armor of Yah. We must put on all the armor of Yah. Does he use the word put on? Labash. We must put it on. We must put on the candle of Yah. That we will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We must put it on Yisrael Yah. We cannot go without and battle the enemy without putting on the whole armor. We'll get to that quickly. And it's one thing where all that begins. We got to do this. We got above all things, in order for us to get dressed, we got to operate in the spirit here in the book of Yehuda, in the book of Jude. Jude 23. This is what it says. Yah has pulled us out of the stench of darkness. So the strange garment cannot be one's attire. You don't go out here and dress like no fool or no faggot. Look what Jude says in 23. He said, we are those that are others that were delivered with fear. He said, Yah, pulling them out of the fire, even Hayden, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. So you got a garment that has been spotted by the flesh? What is the garment that's spotted by the flesh? Your self-righteousness that is filthy, your hubris, prideful ways. You hear those that say, I'm proud of my children. Yah say, pride go before fall. And haughtiness before destruction. You should not be proud of your children, your son, your daughter. I got a grandchild in Case Mart School. Proud parents. Proud grandmom. It's wrong. It's wrong. Proud destroys anyone. It brings you down to the dungeons of hell. We ought to hate the garment. We wear a garment that has been spotted by the flesh. What is in the flesh? All that is in the world uh, is the lust of the flesh, uh, the pride of life. We've spotted the mind uh, of the garment of Yah with our damn flesh. Uh, oh, this my grandbaby, he is special. He is no more special than anyone. I can never understand that. People say, well, we're just going to pray for my family. No, I've never thought like that. Uh, we pray for all Yisraeli. What about the baby that your baby is fat? Uh, they get to eat. They got a clean plate. What about the babies down there in Haiti that they're struggling and they're suffering uh, and they can't even eat, man? This is a selfish, wicked judge. I hate it. I hate it. If I'm wrong, let me be wrong. When I stand before him, I say, yeah, I hated it. I hated it. And we don't give a damn. Who is my mother? Who is my brother? Who is my family? They that hear the word of Yah. And they that do the will of Yah. The Yahshua Allah, the same is my Ach. The same is. I remember as a young, ignorant man, I said to my mother, I said it, you're not my mother. You birthed me, you're the channel, but you're not my mother. I didn't disrespect her. She told everyone that would hear that. I would see those, say, yeah, I would see your mama, man, yeah. She didn't understand what I was saying. You don't love ya? A man's foe shall be of his own house. Daughters and sons keep mothers from loving Yah. Daughters and sons keep fathers from serving Yah faithfully. It's amazing that you will do what they command, but they don't do a damn thing you command. They will break, you will break your neck for them and your back, but they don't give a damn about you. You will go out of your way for them. They will not even say, damn you, daddy. They may not say it like that. They're not going to even lose one damn bit of skin off their wicked teeth. I never treated my mother like that. 
But I will tell her, oh woman, if you die in your sins, in hell you're going to lift your eyes. Oh my son, he's not bad. He's a wicked boy. My daughter, you know, she does some bad things, but she's, she's not sweet. They say the same thing about the damn woman that killed all of her children, but she loved her baby. She took care of them. She didn't take care of them. You take care of them, you train them in the ways of Yah. You can't love a child unless you train the child in the ways of Yah. You're a damn liar. You train them in the ways of Yah. When they're old, they will not depart from it. So how can you love them when you don't teach them the disciplines of Yah? You rebuke and you deal with all long suffering. You're a wicked little heifer. Get out of my face. You're wicked, boy. You're wicked and you're wicked. But you smile and embrace them. And hell, you don't even know how to embrace Yisrael. Yeah? Going home on the ship to Zion. One day I'm going home. Can I move on? I am whether you buy it or not. Listen to this. I want, to, I want this to speak to all of you. My Zakin Yaramiya teaches us how that the elders should, a conversation, how we should talk. This is what Shirak says. Just listen to it. Shirak 9 5. He says to us as men, he said, Let your conversation, your words, your lifestyle, be with men of understanding, men that can discern. See, that's what our conversation should be with. He did not say, Let your conversation be with women of understanding. Did y'all make a man? Did he make a woman? He didn't make a faggot, did he? He didn't make a bulldagger. So he's precise when he used the word ish. He said, let not your conversation, he said, let your conversation be with men of understanding. Shirach 915, of understanding. And let all your discussions be about the Torah of the Most High. That's what our conversation should be about. I don't care what we talk about, it should lead back to the Torah of Yah. The Zokin, the conversation be about the Torah of Yah. Hallelujah. And everything leads back to the Torah. Quickly in the book of Melchiah, Melchiah. I'm going to finish this today. Won't be long. Melchiah. Melchiah chapter 2 verse 16. Hallelujah. There's one thing that Yah hates. He hates us as a nation divorcing him and giving him a writing of divorcement. And we show him that we have given him a writing of divorcement by our garments, what we put on, what we allow in our minds. So this is what the Nobi says to us in Malachi, Malachi 2.16. For Yah, the sovereign master of Yisrael, says that he hates of your shalach, of your putting away. For one covers or kasa, you conceal, you cover your Hamas, your violence, uh, with your garment, with your lebash. You tell me people can cover their violence with their garment? With their false garment. What garment covers your violence? Your face. You say you love me and you don't give a damn about me. Yeah, he said you cover your hamas with your garment. So you smile when you see me. <laughs> and then you know that it is a nukhri. It's a garment of adultery. It's filthy. You're played in the dens of Baal. And so when you see me, you pretend you pretend that you got on the right garment, but it is a strange garment. It is a strange garment. It is not the garment of Yah. I'm going to show us the details of Yah's garment. We must put it on. We must lobage. And what Nahash tells us, uh, we put on our own strange garment. Our own figure, our way of processing. We can only process Torah through the mind of Yahshua. Our minds are filthy. There's nothing tough in your mind. He said, we put on the violence, uh, the garment of violence, uh, say Yahweh of hosts. He said, therefore take heed to your ruach. Do we take heed to our own ruach? He said, take heed to the thing that is alive in you. You know, these self-righteous people, they will hear something and they're full of pretense. It's one thing that the elder women of Tizayan should do. Anytime you embrace the company uh, of young women, you teach them the beauty of love. You teach them how to love them because they don't know a damn thing about love. 
They don't know a damn thing about love. And a man, a messenger of Yah, through the power of Yah, by his representation, by his longevity, he teaches the young men how to love their wives because he doesn't know how to love a wife. It is not just bad. And so you find these damnable, fictitious individuals, uh, they dress themselves like they're so righteous uh, and they're so quiet. You're nothing but a damn busybody, a Jezebel in everybody's affairs. Uh, you are sneaking, you're a damn liar. Yeah. Oh, when they gather among others, they, they put on their deceit for their strange gum. You know? Oh, I'm so pious. You're a damn lie, man. Woman, shut your wicked mouth. I hate people like that. You see through that damn book, they will pollute the whole house. They will pollute the whole house. They will draw you in a minute. They will draw you and say, well, you know what? I ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. That is the garment that has been spotted with the flesh. And they got on their garments. Come on, they got dresses down to the ankles. Covering everything that could be covered. And yet they're wicked. They have this nukri, this adulterous spirit. They will lay with any lie. They will lay with any lie. Isn't that how adultery comes? Come on now. Just be real with me. When you lie. When you lie. When a man commits adultery, he lies. When a woman, she lies. Come on. There's more women committing adultery than men. They're all self-righteous. There are more women watching pornography than men. And it's just the damn truth. They're filthy. There's something these old women think that some young man wants them. That's right, mama. I know that's right. I was thinking the other day, I said, this a halt your issue. And this old woman back here, they've been with me since day one. See, I appreciate things like that. She's never given me hell. This old woman has always been the same. How many words you think I say to you in one year, old woman? How much do I talk to you in one year? How many words you think I say to you? Just talk so I can hear you. Say so what? All right. Not even one word a year. But she has seen this young individual progress and grow. She's been with me all those years. I tell people, I say to even men, I wish that you had that kind of spirit that that woman has. You can call anyone that's worth thinking about her, but she, they'll walk and talk on his own. There are only two people I know around here that when you call them, you can always get them. That's one of my foes back. <clears throat> I didn't mean to say it that way, but my, I don't know, should I say friend, you'll sit, say it. Oh man, you coward down, man. Come on out. I'm not afraid of him. I'm not afraid of that man. Okay, my friend here and this old woman, you call them anytime. I've shown, brother, I say, watch this out. Ima Sabea. Ima Sabea. Yes, Rayak. Okay, she got it on. She has not let anything deter her. Children, sisters or brothers, she has pressed on. Say what? It is the truth, man. These two have... She was with me before she was, and he didn't stop her from coming. We're all those strong men that were with me. He's a prophet. You liar. I never said I was a prophet. Can I proceed here? Hallelujah. I want to get back to this, Yisraeli. Hallelujah. I want to show you the garment that is strange before you. Go back to, uh, up to Zechariah. Is this a garment here? And I want to get into the indulgence of the garment of Yeshua. Zechariah quickly. Zechariah chapter 13 verse 4. Yah says, he's talking about his nation. And it shall come to pass in that day. He's talking about the last day now. <clears throat> he's specific. It shall come to pass in that day that the prophet shall be ashamed every one of his vision because they have lied. They don't have the knowledge of Yah. They shall be ashamed. Uh, when he shall naba or prophesy, speak foretell, uh, neither shall they wear a rough garment. They shall not wear the clothing. They shall not uh, wear the ruach of Yah. You think because uh, one doesn't wear a $500 silk suit? Uh, that's not what that means. Uh, 
He said, they shall not wear the Asa, the rough garment. You shall not see the battle that they have battled against the forces of hell. Zechariah 13, 4. He said, they shall not wear the rough garments uh, uh, to deceive. They're not going to wear anything to make you pretend uh, that they are a prophet. They're going to stand in the boldness of Yah's truth and the power of Yeshua. But he's, he shall say, I am no prophet. He said, I'm a husband man. I'm an abbot. I work as a servant. For man taught me to keep the cattle of my youth. He will not wear the garment of roughness. That his speech will be crude. That's what the messengers of Yah need. They need the refined speech of Yah. We can't back down. We can't sell out. As a young 22-year-old man, family and all, that's what we call family. My natural brother just died. I hadn't seen him in 15 years. I love y'all. And I'm not going to embrace their wickedness and compromise. I will not go in their social circles and make them feel uncomfortable. And I will not subjugate myself to that. You can. I'm not compelling anyone. That's just me. And you're not going to change me from that. You're sure in his own country could he do mighty works? He could not do any mighty works that did. Well, I testify about your sure to them. That's what the woman called me that her husband did. And now he's gone away from her. And she is miserable. And he's telling her, I just can't turn this woman loose. I can't turn her loose. Pray for him. I said, I will not pray for him. I pray y'all kill him. I pray for you, woman. I pray that he gives you strength and assurance. That you will obey all that Yah command. But I love him. I say he doesn't love you. He's come to the knowledge of truth. He's put his hand to the plow. He's turned his back. He's not fit. I say, how are you thinking, woman? Hell, I say, do you, do you have children? Yes, sir, but they're grown. I say, but hell, that doesn't mean a damn thing. I say, this man sleeping in strange beds is not protected. To, even if it's that, I say, what if he brings you aid in some kind of disease that is incurable? I remember a friend of mine. We were friends in the days. Uh, listen to this. I had a friend. He went to the Philippines. He was in the Navy. And of course, in the Philippines and all those nations of Asia, where the boats of America, they got nothing but holes. There are women that sell themselves uh, because of the poverty. It's just the truth. It's just the truth. He went to the Philippines and he was there. And he contracted some kind of disease to this day. And the man, his body gets so raw. It is like his flesh. It's just the stench of death. Everything on him. And there is no cure for it. It's not herpes. It flies up on him. For months he can't do anything. He went into something that was filthy. The laid with this one got up. Laid with that 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 one got up. And no water. Didn't even bathe themselves. I feel sorry for him. He has this. It's everything here begins to rot. All he can do is live in bed. And putrefied stench comes out of that. It's the truth. I say, what if this man brings death to you, woman? You crazy. I'm not going to pray for him. And I did not. Pray y'all get my son out of prison. No, I pray y'all let the beast stay in prison. He sinned. He broke the law. Let him do his time. If you can't do the time, don't do the crime. Let him stay there. Maybe he may learn something. That prison was right me all the time. I'm going to give that oath to Zakim Benjamin. And all the letters, I want him to respond to them like he used to. All right. Moving quickly. Baruch. Here in the book of Baruch quickly. Baruch. The book of Baruch. Baruch. Hallelujah. First Baruch 5.1. Yah says, put off O Yerushalayim. This is what he commands us. How beautiful. I love this. O Baruch. Yah says, put off first Baruch. Five and one. Put off, O Yerushalayim, the garment of mourning and affliction. How do we wear a garment of, if that is a keli, a garment? You tell me that's a garment? He say, put it off. And then he tells us to labash. This is what he tells us. He says, put on first Baruch 5. One. He says, I want you to clothe yourself. Clothe them, and uh, He said, clothe yourself with comeliness. Yeshua said, Yeshua had no comeliness, didn't it? 
Didn't it say that? So we've been taught that he, he was not a handsome man. But he used the word hada. That's what comeliness is. Uh, he says, uh, he said, put on the garment of splendor and beauty. That's what, that's what hada, hada is. That's what the comeliness of Yahshua is. Uh, that we shall put on this garment. We shall labage. Uh, put on this garment of hada. This garment, uh, this ornament of splendor and beauty. That's why we as Yisrael, yeah, we, we walk into a place everybody should take notice. Everybody should know who we are. Who is that man? He's strange. He doesn't look like me. Maria Short, I was at a place, this woman, uh, she was un Hispanic. We utilize that, that ethnicity. That is not a race, all right? Uh, she walks up to us and she says, You all are not from here. You don't look like us here. And that's the way it should be. You walk into a place of business, whether you're broke, and I walk in that I'm broke, they shall know that this one is not, uh, look at him. So that's what the comeliness of the Hadra of Yah is. Uh, it is a splendor, it is a beauty, it is an excellent, uh, that even, uh, even though in the midst of brokenness and weakness, uh, they say, man, he got something that, wow, that's, woo. Get quiet on me, but that's all right. He said, that, he said, we should put on the beauty of, of, of Hadar. He said, of the splendor that comes from Yah forever. Why don't we put on Yah splendid? And take off these damn strange garments, these strange concepts of Nahash, these strange ideas, this false interpretation. It always amazes me how one can take one scripture and they develop from that. I've listened to a man last night for a few moments. He says... Uh, I'm just going to talk from this one scripture. I said, how do you do that? You know, there are others I would like to talk from, and they've just began to make up all kinds of stuff to associate with that, and that's how people are. Listen to this. In verse 2, he said, cast about or take off you the double garment. He said, cast about you, or labash, put on you the double garment of Sadiq. Put on the double garment of righteousness. Get your heart right, your mind right. Put it on, Yisrael, Baruch. He said, put on this kind of garment, uh, which comes from Yah. He said, and set the diadem. Uh, you got these little old cheap turbans and you think you're right? Uh, no, I want the crown of his honor, the crown of his beauty. He said, put the crown of the diadem upon your head. Uh, the splendor of the everlasting of Yah. I want the power of the testimony of Yahshua to resonate from my rush. Uh, and that he is my head. He is the power of my mission of the government in my mind. That's what I want. Uh, that men can see the power of Yah splendid. Uh, Listen what Yah says here in Baruch. You all read this if you've got the book of Baruch. And don't buy the Baba Gam, buy the book of Baruch. We got it here. You're shot. Look what he says in verse 3. For Yah will show your, he will show your excellent, your splendor to every country under the heavens. So we're the true zero of Yah. You tell me he doesn't show our splendor. Something is wrong. It's either he's telling us the truth or he's beguiling us with lies. He shall make your splendor and your beauty, your comeliness, your chada. When you walk into a country, they will know. They will look at you and say, who is that man? Look at that woman. Look at that one. Hell, we blend in with the world. I don't care if I'm dirty coming out of the hay field. I don't care where I go. I don't care where I go. Makes no difference. He's walking another day and this cat coming in his car, you know, right there, you know, pedestrians. Is, I, I, I always get pedestrians right away. And he's like, whoa! And I just looked at him and I'm, like, I, and I'm walking and I look at him like, just like that, son. You can see the whole man's countenance change. I give pedestrians that honor. I don't care if they're from there, I, I, I will stop right here. Go on, Pastor, come on. No, no. He will make our beauty, our splendor, our garments to be seen throughout every nation. We have on such a strange garment. It's filthy. Our minds are so estranged from Yah. That's what he meant when he said the voice when I read in Malachi. Our minds are estranged. When a husband and a wife are estranged from each other, they're separated, aren't they? They may live in a house together, but they're still separated. They may pre present a false 
image of what their marriage is, but come on. I can look at things and say, nah, ain't nothing that, man. Hmm? Stop that. Just get real. Pride won't let us do that, will it? Move in quickly. Must finish. Yahweh will show your splendor to every country under the heavens, for your name shall be called by Yah Almighty. He's going to say, Yosipia. He's going to say, Zachinyaramia. Bitter mean. He's going to say, Mehale. He's going to call your name. He said, Your name shall be called by Yah Almighty forever, for the shalom of Sadiq and the splendor of Almighty Yahweh's worship. He said, Arise, O Yerushalayim, and stand on high, and look about toward these, and beyond your children, gathered from the west unto the east by the word of the Kadosh one. He says, Rejoice in the remembrance of Almighty Yahweh. He said, Arise. And when arises, they arise with strength. When you stand up, Shaul says, when all the trials have come, stand still. Stand. When the blist of hell roar against you, you stand. You don't have to use no physical actions or the tacticians of, of some physical thing. I was telling Octayon, I remember one day going to the prison down here. And when you went down to the prison, you had doors to get through. You come through one door, another door, you went through this door. Man. And they didn't let you through the next door until that door closed. You want to open that door? Ah, boom. Then you went through another prison door. Ah, boom. Then another door open. Ah, boom. And so that one day I went and where my mammy made soups just like I do here. And so there was a cat who was my biggest Zach King. And so I'm walking down with the chaplain. I'm walking down, going down to the building. And this cat, he started looking at me just like this. With disdain, for what reason? And I noticed him looking at me. And so I'm walking. And so uh, when I get right there up on him, listen now. Did I say you want to throw down, dog? I looked him right and I said, how you doing, man? How's everything? You all right? <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. Just that alone. See, Yah will make our splendid known. He will make our walk. You know the way I used to walk. I don't walk no more since the door of Yah. Feel my mind. No, I don't. Oh, no, the way I used to sing. Oh, I don't sing no more since Yahshua. Feel my mind. Oh, you know the way I use the tongue. I don't talk no more since the root of ya. Feel me, oh, the ways I went, the ways that I talk, oh, I don't do them anymore. I like that. I like you preaching. If nobody else loves you, I love you. Because unless I love me, I cannot love you. To love my neighbor as I love me. Can I move on to some finality of this? Hallelujah. Can I show you a garment that it is the true garment of Yah and it represents the great power of Yah. And we need to put this on and take off these strange garments. We need to stop coming before Yah with no offering. We should always enter into his presence with Torah. Toda ya, toda ya, toda ya for Yeshua Moshiach. Toda ya, toda ya, toda ya for the Lamb Yeshua. Listen, I brought ya mama. Oh, that he has done for me. Oh, I lift my voice unto ya. He commands us to bring before him the offering of Torah. You bring your lips sealed. It's a strange garment. It is the spirit of Nahash. You see the simple things that Yah commands us to do. We don't do them because we're rebellious and we're hard at it. Listen to this in the book of Yeshaya. Quickly, Isaiah 61. This is the kingdom. This is the representation of Yeshua HaMashiach. 
This is the characteristics of his powerful pulsating image. And this is what we should represent. Isaiah 61 3. He says to assume or to appoint, to appoint to them that mourn, that abal, that mourn into Zion. What? To give them the beauty for ashes. For oil of joy for mourning. And this is what he gives us, the garment. He gives us this garment that we can labash. He says, and he give us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That's what Yah has given us. I want to wear that garment for heaviness. He said that they might be called what the tree of the Ezrek of Sadiqa, the tree of righteousness. The planting of Yah that he might be beautified. So that's what we must have, Yisra'ya. We must wear the garments of Yah. We wear the garments of all kind of corruption, our filthy minds, our anger, our hostility toward each other, our hatred. These are garments that are strange. They're nukri, they're garments of adultery. The garments we wear, we're not faithful to each other. At least in my days, even if you had an alt or a situation against one, you will let them know, look, brother, or look, man, you, you know, you just ain't right. You did that. You might as well say you did. And you found some of the greatest of friendship bonding because people were more honest. Now we have liars. We're full of shekhar, lies, and deceit. We don't know how to be honest. It is right, mama. In my days, they could say, I can read you, boy. You're a false cat. Big Daddy Jim, you're a false dude, man. You ain't nothing but a liar. Then Bro Will, he wasn't afraid to say, say, yeah, you're a liar, Big Daddy, Fat Daddy. You know you're a liar. You're false, man. You're a clown. And you were so Big Daddy Jim, he began to straighten himself up, didn't he? Sure, we don't do that with each other. We coddle. And we covet the wickedness of Yisrael. We call, because your garment is identified with their garment. It's one thing. Can I ask you a question? If you saw a man, I, I, I don't have time to read that I made, but if there's a man that comes in and he's fly, and you look at your stuff, your stuff ain't fly, you, you, you're not going to just approach him. Listen to me. If you look at a man and he's dressed or a woman, women say, look at that hoe. She thinks she's fine. Well, she must be finer than you because you're judging your fineness of that hoe's fineness. So, Dalla, you perceive her to be fine, so that's why you're critical of her. It is the truth. So a man that's dressed to the tilt, and you know he's dressed when you look at him, you say, man, that cat. And you look at your stuff, you say, just ain't right, ain't like his stuff. So even the appearance of a man will cause one to abrogate or remove himself from that or draw to him. So a man that's dressed fly, when he's dressed fly, he see, I use those expressions. When he's dressed in a way physically, I'm using this to translate the spiritual. And there's another man dressed as equal to him. They, they talk to each other. So a man like me and you dress in your dirty jeans, we go, oh, hey, Zachary, how you doing, man? So we congregate. So we find those that come among us that have strange spirits, uh, and they want to congregate with you because you have a strange spirit. Uh, your clothing is strange. Your garment is strange, Yisrael. Yeah. That's all that is. Let's just be honest about who we are, what we are, and deal with who we are. A man that's dressed uh, in a thousand dollar suit, you see, got a thousand dollar elegant shoes. You don't mess with me because your shoes don't look like that. It's just the truth. It's right. Same thing with the woman. She thinks that another woman is much more uh, sensual than she. She doesn't mess with her. She'll go around that woman. Am I telling the truth, young daughter? Shush, I know what I'm saying. So it is in the spiritual realm. So if I'm dressed in the garment of Sadiq, you got in the garment of Sadiq, we love fellowship. If you got on a strange garment and I got on one, then we're going to fellowship with each other. So if I got the spirit of, 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 of nukri in me, you're going to have that same spirit of nukri in you. Quickly, quickly here. Hallelujah. 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 We need to begin to dress ourselves this way quickly. First Thessalonians, yeah. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 8. But let us sue our other day that are the light of your Shua Hamashi. We must be sober. Then he tells us putting on a labash, clothe ourselves, be clothed, putting on the breastplate of imuna and love. See, we must have that above all things. Anyone that comes with a strange garment, you can look in the heart. You can look at a man's poor name and see whether he loves or whether she's kind. You can look at a woman and see whether she's a loving woman or sweet or kind. Sure you can, Yisraya. 
So we must first of all dress ourselves beginning with our breasts, our hearts. Uh, and we must have on the breastplate of Imuna, Faith, uh, and Ahava. And then we must put on the helmet, the helmet uh, or, 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 of the Tikva of the hope of Yahshua. Our heads are garnered uh, with Yahshua in our minds and on our thoughts. That's why we dress. Uh, we don't dress with some strange doctrines that have no, no foundation in Torah. That you can't go show me 10, 15, 20 scriptures uh, is support that. I was talking about Oxymion, we were discussing a matter, and I only own two aspects of the matters that we discussed. Uh, I, got nearly, I, I got nearly 30 pages of scripture. I can't go get one or two verses and I'm finished. And they all tie into each other. Whether it comes to time, how time is measured among y'all, I got 30 pages on that, 30 pages on this. Uh, and I can show you, I'm not just talking, I got about 50 pages just on those two subjects. Uh, whether the sun goes around the earth or the earth goes around the sun. Uh, I got over 100 scriptures that shows evidently that the sun, it comes and goes. Uh, it comes up, uh, don't they say the sun has come up, it bows, uh, it enters into the presence of the earth. Uh, this is the centrality of Yah's uh, kingdom here, the earth. Uh, and everything evolves around it. And so people get one verse and they get excited about that. I don't get excited. I get excited about the whole of the truth. You, can't, you cannot deduct what y'all said from one verse. This book is a book of mystery. And that's why people fall. That's why they create strange doctrines. Because they do not know. Ephesians 6.13 quickly. Here's the spiritual armor of Yah. Does he tell us to put this on? Is this clothing? Ephesians. Ephesians 6.13. He said, wherefore... Take unto you the whole armor of Yah, that you may be able to withstand in the evil days, and having done all, stand. He says, stand therefore, look now, he used the word guts, clothe yourself, labash. Stand therefore, having your mind, your loins, guts about uh, with Torah. You got to put on that clothing, that must be the clothing of Yisrael, Yah. Your mind clothed with truth, all Torah. He said, and then having on the breastplate of Sadiqah, when men see you, they know you're a righteous man. Your words are uh, personify the power of the righteousness of your mind, man. Uh, not you dressed in some damn folly and stupid conversation uh, and trying to show yourself to be wise. Uh, a man that has the power of the uh, gift of Yah, it will make room for him. Yah promotes his servant. That is right, man. He said, and then our feet, they must be prepared with the bezorak of shalom. The way we walk, we walk in shalom. When we come in the midst, the whole environment change. These are the garments of Yah. Not our feet running from house to house, busy body and running our mouths and talking like damn jackals. It is right, old woman. He said, and above all that, take the shield of Imona faith. Who with you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, Hashatan? And then you take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Ruach, which is the word of Yah. Now that is our dress right there. If you come in any other strange garment, uh, 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 nik, nikri, uh, you cannot offer the offerings unto Yah. And the reason we can't praise Him, reason our hands don't go up to Him, because we got a stranger garment on. This is all about worship in the last days. It's about the Shaha. And that's what Savon Yah was talking about. And so there are those individuals who will take that one, you got on a strange garment, you got on a necktie. You silly boy. You silly jackass. And when we're gullible, we buy that. We're so fearful, we don't even know. And then you're dressing like the punk rockers in the world, and yet your garments are not strange. People are something, are they not? You don't, they don't come to me and talk like that. Because they know. You're not going to get by with me. Hallelujah. And so that's what we take, the sword of the rock of Yah, which is the word. We need to get this word in our heart. How, the purpose of the word in our heart is what? That we sin not against Yah. That we say, I will hide this Torah in my heart that I sin not against Yah. That I will commit not the hatta. That's how we do it. Even in our ignorance, we can have this truth in us. And it will keep us from things, Yisraya. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. The book of wisdom, the book of Shalomo 518. He shall put on Sadiq as a breastplate. This is the example of Yahshua right here. Now, that, that the same thing he told us in Ephesians. This is what Shalomo says in the book of wisdom. This is one what we call the Sefer or the lost books of the Sefer. I utilize all of them. I have the pseudo pick uh, fire and all of that. I utilize them and I study them and I look at them. No, you don't even study the 66 books you have. So if you buy all the rest of them, you're not going to look at that. 
You got these false pretenders like though they're studying that. They don't do that. I look at them all. You understand? Hallelujah. It says that uh, he shall put on righteousness as a breast, as a, a shiron, as a breastplate, and true impartial judgment and justice instead of a helmet. That is the mind of Yahshua Hamashiach. He shall take Kodash for an invisible seal. He shall be so set apart, so pure, that shall be his shield instead of Imuna, because he doesn't need Imuna. He is faith. His Sir, his severe wrath shall be sharp for the sword. And the world shall fight with him against the unwise. So he doesn't need to take the word. His, his wrath is his sword. And the world is going to fight against him. That's why people fight against the true messengers. It is the spirit of Nahash. I have not purported or utilized that word much today. But we're talking about the end time. And we're talking about the strange garments, the strange thoughts of our minds. That's what we're dealing with. And we're so easily moved with strange teachings and strange doctrines that, uh, that Shaul said will come. And we get caught up in that. Uh, and we do that to, to, to emphasize us and to emphasize my ability. And it's not so. We should not do that, Yisrael. It is iron that sharpen iron. You can't take copper to sharpen iron. I was talking to my Akhtayon Yad. I was talking about Mahalaya. He said, but uh, he didn't do it in just one day. I said, you're right. You can't go in that gym and you never bench press 350 pounds, 400 pounds. Someone had a lot of stuff on that bar the other day. You see that? You see all that in there? Reels, man, there, boy. It's work taking it off, man. I take it all up. Not on that. So you can't go to the gym and the physical strength and think you're going to go on that bench 300 pounds. It will kill you, crush down on your neck, kill you dead. You can't do it. So can, neither can you bear the weight of this. Who shall he give knowledge to? To those that are weaned from milk? That make a mess. When you give a baby something like that, you give the little children something, a little knowledge. I know my ABC. No, mama, let me show you. No, I can count. One, two, three, eight, nine, nine, ten, twelve, eight. Your daughter, she showed me. Probably watch this. One, two, three, five, six, seven, nine, ten, nine. You think you know something I don't know, little girl? Papa, I can count. Let me write. Really watch this, Papa. One, two, three. And that's my far she can go. That's the way we are with the children. Yes. Let me show you, Papa. Let me show you. She comes. I can do that. Let me show you. Let me show you. No, I'm not going to let you show me. Let me show you. I can do it. Let me show you. Watch. Watch. No. That's the way we are, the children. Yes. Do mothers dress their little children the same way they dress? And the says, no, Mama put on a different kind of outfit, although it's the same outfit, and she dresses them a little different. They wear the, what they call baby stuff. And so you can't dress a baby. A baby's mind cannot equate to the mind of mastery of knowledge of Torah. Because that man has dressed himself every day for 30, 35 years. You're not even 30 years old. How, you think, come on, Yisrael. You're not even 30 years old. How are you going to tell somebody something? You're not even 30 years old. How, how, how do you know the wisdom of Yah? I have a few verses I want to read in the closing. We'll move through these somewhat quickly. Tehillim, Psalms 30, 11. This is when your grandson us in our proper clothes in the renewed vigor. Nawi says in Psalms 30, 11, he said, Yah, you have turned from me my mourning, my great cries, into mahul, into dancing and shouting. Look what Yah has done. He said, you have put on my sackcloth, and you have, as I, you have clothed me. With gladness or simcha. The gladness or the ish of gladness, that is the garment we need, the gladness of shimcha. That we excited. A gladness is one that expresses the excitement that we're in the presence of Almighty Yah. He goes on the, into Helium 1839. I'm talking about the word good, which is the same as clothing, it is azab. He says in Tehillim 1839, for Yah have girds, he has azab me with strength. He has put the clothing of strength, or high yield, uh, to the battle. You have subdued me, those that rose up against me. That's what he, those are the clothing of Yisrael. Yah is his clothing of strength. That is our clothing, and Yah is the one that dressed us. How many little babies uh, dress themselves? Oh, little Kili, I says to Mama, I, I want to dress myself. She clothed her. He is our boy, he clothes us. He put the right garments on us, Yisrael. 
Hallelujah. Yah says to Eob in all of his uh, powerful utterance uh, as to his state, his condition. Job, Eob, Job 47. This is what Yah commands of this man. Uh, well, you don't know what I'm going through, Eliphaz. Nobody's gone through what I've done. Uh, nobody's seen it like me. Yah says to Eob, Job uh, 40 and 7. He said, boy, get up, dress yourself. Uh, he said, get up, your loins. He said, get up your loins, uh, now like a gabber, like a mighty warrior of a man. Uh, he said, I would demand of you, uh, declare unto me, I want you to dance in me. He said, dress yourself, boy. And I want you to come in your warrior's clothing. I don't want you to come like a little boy, wearing Converse tennis shoes, house shoes sliding around. He said, get up yourself. Stand up like a man. Put on the garment of a warrior. We need to have the garment of a warrior. Yeah. We got to have that emuna, the shell of faith. That's what we have. We need that sword of the ruach. That's what he commanded him, didn't he not? Hallelujah. Yeah. Psalms 93.1. This is one of the most precious garments we could put on. Psalms 93, 1. Yah says that we says Yahweh, he reigns. He is clothed with geuth. He's clothed with majesty. The geuth is like the roaring of the sea as the sea rises. Have you ever been on the ocean? Did the sea, do you all see the tides when they ebb, when they come in? Nothing more powerful than that, is it? That is the geuth of Yah, that is his majesty. And he gives us that to show us uh, give us an indication of his great beauty. Uh, nothing beautiful like the ocean when it comes in like that. Nothing. Nothing. He said he is clothed with majesty. Yah is labage. He is clothed with strength. With the ooze. With the great power of personal, political, and social power. We don't even know how to socialize among each other. We don't know how to interact among each other. He is clothed with great power. Where... With, he has, as he has good to himself. He said, the world also is established that it cannot be moved. He, he, he clothed the earth. That this is the clothing of Yah. Are we the sons of Yah? Are we begotten of Yah? That we should be clothed with the same kind of majesty and strength and beauty. That when men see us, they ask us the reason of the tikva. Why do we wait on this one? We call Yahweh. That is the truth. Those of his garments... And so we should dress the same way our Abba dress. And those that are leaders of Yah's truth and speaks with great elegance. Psalms tells us this. This is the greatest of clothing that we can wear. To Helium 132.9. It says, let your Kohim, your Kohan, your priests. Psalms 132 verse 9. Let them be labash, clothed with sadiq. With honesty, with the character of Yah, we must be clothed with Sadiq. He says, uh, and when they're clothed with the righteousness of Yah, if we think we are leaders, we are of the nature of the guidance of the Levi. He says, when we're clothed with Sadiq, and let your Kirushim, Yisraya, shout for Rana, for joy. Wow. See, when, there's, when the Kohan is clothed with Sadiq, you know. The Torah of Yah is Yah's, Yah's Sadiq is everlasting to everlasting, isn't it? And his Torah is the truth. So if a, if a Kohan is clothed, his mind is clothed with the Sadiq of Yah, you know he does come in with you with something that's strange because he deals with basically one facet of our lives, our uh, strange garments that cause us, this Nukri, the spirit of Horam, uh, to overtake us. And that's how the Kohan should be. He should have on the righteousness of the breastplate of the Sadiq of Imuna of Omani Yah Yisraya. That's what he has. So he is ready for the battle. He has girded himself for the battle that is ahead. Let me close with this last verse here. Hallelujah. In First Kepha Peter, chapter 1, verse 13, he says, Wherefore gird or asa labash. Your mind or the strength, the loins of your mind. He tell us to be sober. Don't be silly and 
foolish and play. He said, don't do that. He said, Antigva, a hope to the kids, the end, the akhrit, for the end time. For the free unmerited love and favor that is brought to you at the revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach. The only way you're going to get that, you got to gird up the loins of your mind. Your mind has to be dressed in truth. And if you don't dress your mind in truth, you, 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 you're, you, you're susceptible to anything and you believe everything. And that's just the truth. When a man knows the truth, he knows the truth because he has continued in the word of Yah. He has continued that way. Then he understand the nuances of truth. And once he understands truth, then he yada, he experiences truth, then he is free from all the strange garments. So because a man comes here dressed in a garment down here, and he doesn't dress like me, he doesn't dress like you, uh, he got a garment, he, he got tis his own, uh, that, that, does that mean he's a righteous man? And your garment is strange? Well, what if a Muslim come in here? They wear the same kinds of hats. You find those that wear the same kinds of hats as the Hindus, don't they wear that? Of the Sikh? Those are the Sikh religion? And they wear polyester hats. It's not fine linen hat. The mitre was made out of the finest of wool. It was made out of the finest of linen. You can't even find fine linen in this country. And they had beautiful kuluras. There were colors there. Where the Sikh Sikhs must be blue or not, that's a, it is tesik. It means the color of Tasika is from the strongest and the beauties of the violets uh, unto the extreme. Uh, from the extreme of the reds unto the reds. Uh, and this is how ignorant we are because we have not been taught. Uh, and so we have not been taught. We're subject to anything. Anybody can tell us anything. We buy it. Oh, brother, that's profound. It's not profound. Hell, that's weak. That's weak to me. It, that, that you said that? That's far as you come, boy? They want to make men, these boys, leaders that have no knowledge. They are not here, they're boys. They're boys. We need strong men today. And the only way a man is going to be strong, he must examine himself all the time and say, you are wicked, boy. And say, you are, you are sad. I talk to me like, I say to my show, you couldn't have, if I talk to you the way I talk to me, you would leave me. Now what that little child said to me, Papa, you are wicked. I said, say it again, little girl. I don't want to hear you say that again. So she's playing around, Papa, look at this, Papa, Papa. She likes for me to take her and lean her back and pull her back up. Papa, do that. I said, no, tell me what you said. She, well, it took about 40 seconds for an answer me. And then she finally said, Papi, you are wicked, Adam is wicked, and I am wicked. Is that so? Thank you, little girl. You must have heard me crying out on Thursday night saying, yeah, what a vile, wretched, filthy thing I am. I'm so glad because of the dam of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. If it had not been for Yahshua, my son, I'm glad of that. I'm glad that it is the dam that washes and cleanses me. I'm glad. I'm glad that his mercies are renewed. His naham. His naham. Not his hasid, but his naham. The tender mercies of Yah. That he has pity. His naham, he has pity on us. Mama would have mercy on you. She just wouldn't whip your butt as hard as she intended that time as she did the last time. But when it's naham, it is a pity of mercy. I'm glad. Because I'm a filthy, vile thing. I, I stink. When I come from here, I smell as well. That's why we must hate the garment that has been spotted. Our minds have been spotted with our flesh. We ought to hate our corrupt, wicked ways and our stupefied disposition. You ought to hate that. So you couldn't take the way I talk to me the way I talk to you. I wouldn't even talk to you that way. I really would not. But this is what it takes from me. It takes this from me. I have to have something uh, that uproots me. That's what I have to have. I don't want to do something passive. I have to do it right. Whatever I do, I do with gusto and strength. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. May God bless you all. Let us stand to our feet. I'll dismiss our king. Hallelujah.
Let us turn toward Yerushalayim, for Yah said, as long as we're in captivity, shall be, we turn to Yerushalayim. He will shemach, he will hear our prayers. In all things, our precious Abba, we do barak you in Yeshua's mighty name. We taught you for all of your great blessings, your kindness, you have poured out upon Yisrael. Yah, watch over us, we ask. And let all things work for your tav, for your honor, that your name may be esteemed and exalted in your shoes name. Bless those that have joined us, those that have been so kindly supportive, and that tenfold over that he has given. And all Yisrael, we told you for all things, your shoes mighty name. And with our voices we shout, Hallelujah. 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 Yabrak Yisrael. Shalom.